Yan, magandang hapon. Hello, hello po sa ating lahat. And welcome, Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. Para sa ating mga kapatid na kapampangan, mayapat kapanapon, na imbagamalim sa mga Ilocano, masantos siyang arin sa mga tagapangasinan, at syempre sa mga kapatid nating tagabikol, marhay na hapon. At hindi syempre, hindi natin kakalimutan na ating mga kapatid na nasa Visayas ngayon. Maayong hapon, maupay nga kulop, maayong ugto. Ang ating mga kapatid from Mindanao, assalamualaikum. Malingkat, kahapon, mapiya kautunga, alungan, and syempre, buenas tardes. So, ba diba, ang ating mga Espanyol na kapatid sa malayang lupain ng Mindanao. Welcome sa ating SDG Action Hour at syempre, magandang hapon sa aking co-host, Mr. Mark Flores. Good afternoon. Naka-mute ka, Brad. Ayan, nalimutan kong pindutin, misda. <laughs> okay. Going back, magandang hapon po, uh, misda, at magandang hapon po sa ating lahat at sa ating mga banyagang panauhin. Good afternoon. Anyong sayo? Konnichiwa. Salamat siyang Wang Chiwao. At welcome po sa ating mga regular na nagkapakilig at nagkapanood sa Zoom at Facebook Live. Hello po sa inyong lahat. Yes, magandang hapon uli sa iyo, partner. No, welcome sa ating ika anim na putsyam or 69th episode ng The Filipino Sustainable Development Goals or SDG Action Hour. Ito yung ating lingguhang kumustahan, kwentuhan para sa maganda, maayos, mabuti at makabuluhang kinabukasan. Ito Isang oras ng hitik na hitik na tala. Kaya yung mga pang topic na talagang at usapin na talagang napapanhong pag-usapan. Alam mo, Bumart, very special ang hapon natin ngayon ang ating talakayan dahil meron tayong dalawang special guests at ang topic na pag-uusapan ng dalawa nating special guests ay talagang very interesting at marami tayong matututunan. Ang ating mga panauhin ay talaga namang expert when it comes to their respective fields. Ay, tama po kayo dyan, Miss Dada. It's very interesting at ang mga topic na mapakahinggan natin sa hapong ito Ang una po nating maririnig ay may kinalalaman sa inumin na paboritong lahat. Walaan nyo kung ano to. Siyempre, kape. Mm. <laughs> Kabataan yes. man o mga katulad naming mga young ones. Sa hapong ito, mapapakinggan din natin ang topic na Barley Grain Forest Coffee, Piloting Rainforest Coffee Production. Wow, Mark, excited ako. Alam mo ba kung bakit? Gusto bakit ko talaga marigi yan. Kasi mahilig talaga din ako sa kape, no? Pero equally interesting din yung ating pangalawang topic na pinamagatang Summer is getting hotter, a glimpse of the Philippine heat index. Nako, kailangan natin malaman niya kasi init-init na talaga ng panahon Ay, sobra, ngayon. Sobra, I'm sure. That. Yes, and I'm sure lahat tayo gusto natin malaman gaano pa kainit ang ating panahon no kumpara sa mga nakaraang taon at malalaman din siguro natin mas iinit pa ba o may pag-asa pa bang lumamig-lamig ng konti. <laughs> Sana nga misda kasi sobra talagang init ng panahon ngayon at gusto ko rin pong marinig ang ating mga topic sa hapong ito kasi parehong makabuluhan at siguradong marami tayong matututunan. Ay, sigurado yan, Mark. Ano? At alam mo, pag kape ang pinag-uusapan, share ko lang sa'yo. Sa bahay namin, Mark, lahat kami mahilig magkape, no? yung mga grown-ups children ko. Kaso kami nang ang husband ko, mahilig kami sa mainit na mainit na kape. Kahit na mainit ang panahon, ewan ko ba kung bakit, baka na, nakagawian na lang yan. Ano? Pero yung aming mga anak, mahilig din sa kape, pero iced coffee ang gusto nila no talagang gumagawa sila ng iced coffee alam natin na may benguet coffee di ba pero Tama. sa akin parang ngayon ko lang narinig ang barley coffee no yung barley coffee na nanggaling sa barley mountain province no alam niyo yung, yung mount barley na yun, malapit sa bontok at famous din sila sa kanilang sariling rice terraces Patama yan, Mista. Uh, actually, nabanggit mo yung barley coffee. Ako kasi laki akong Laguna, kaya pa mas familiar ako, lang ako sa ano eh, uh, kaping barako na Matangas. Ito nga, oh, ah. sample. Magkapi tayo. <laughs> Ayan. Uh, Mista, yan. Uh, Pero palagay ko, pagkatapos ng, ng presentation ng ating speaker, bibigyan tayo ng barley coffee. Sana nga. Ipapadaan nga, niya dito sa screen. <laughs> <laughs> kaya nga, excited na rin akong marinig ang ating susunod na speaker. Napakabata pa po ng ating speaker pero he has already shown 
his unwavering commitment and passion for promoting the conservation of his tribes, forests, and Barlig Mountain Province, pati na rin ang pag-promote ng kultura ng kanilang Lias tribe. Ang ating guest ay nagsulo ng suspension ng road project sa Barlig Forest dahil naniniwala siya na ang kalsadang ito ang magbubukas sa mga kagubatan ng Barlig that will lead to its forest exploitation. Ang kanyang copy uh, farming techniques ay true permaculture, kaya organic ito. Surrounded by forest, nearby creeks and small brooks, and heavy rains especially during the cold months, keep the coffee trees watered. So natural din ang kanyang irrigation system. The forest itself fertilizes the coffee and provides moisture so the soil doesn't dry out. Wow, talagang gusto ko nang marinig yan. Pero alam mo ba, Mark, na yung ating unang guest speaker ay graduate ng Development Communication. Mm. Pero ang puso niya ay nakatalaga para sa isa, para maging isang mahusay na farmer o magsasaka. Gusto ko nang marinig yung preservation techniques niya ng ating guest. So, introduce na natin siya. No? Friends, let us listen to his presentation entitled Barley Rainforest Coffee, Piloting Rainforest Coffee Production. Please welcome our first speaker for this afternoon. Individual award ni po siya ng Gawad Bayani ng Kalikasan in 2022 which was given by the Center for Environmental Concerns of the Philippines. Let us all welcome Mr. Daniel Jason Maches. Good afternoon po, Mr. Maches. Hello, um, my RQ Takuan in. Good day to everyone. So it is uh, but my pleasure and honor to be a part of this uh, meaningful event for us to showcase uh, sustainability and how important it is really to, to to the Filipino people. So medyo kinakabahan ako kasi I'm seeing some familiar faces whom I used to work with when I was uh, uh, with the Future Earth Philippines. But still, I am grateful, uh, especially to Dr. Lelikus, for inviting me uh, to give a presentation about uh, what we are doing in Barlig. Uh, as humble or as small as it is, though we believe that in the future we will be able to scale this uh, project and hopefully create uh, bigger impacts with uh, regards to sustainability. So okay. again, um, I am honored to be here. And I guess before we start with my presentation, uh, I just like to show a short video uh, just for you to have a glimpse of uh, our locality and what we are doing there. So here goes. Okay, go ahead, Mr. Matches. the coffee under an established forest so if you look at it um, we have a variety of uh, tall trees uh, that provide uh, shading for the coffee the leaves falling from these trees also serve as uh, fertilizer so this is one of the coffee that we
planted here and if you look at it the uh, the leaves are green they're they're healthy like what I mentioned here at the farm we don't use any chemical fertilizers we want everything to be organic so for example we use uh, sunflower as a source of nitrogen for our plants So intercrop uh, banana because uh, this is a rich source of potassium. Uh, potassium uh, helps the plant to be able to yield more cherries. Okay, so I hope that uh, through that video, you have now an overview of uh, Barley Great Forest Coffee and what we are doing there. So for now, uh, we'll be dipping deeper uh, into our advocacy, into what we are doing on the ground. So uh, just this, uh, disclaimer, po, uh, I'm not an academician, I'm not a PhD holder, uh, but I really just have this passion to, to plant coffee and use coffee to be able to contribute in conserving or protecting the forest of hometown. Uh, Barley in Mountain Province. Right, so uh, for us to understand more our motivation, why we are doing barley grain forest coffee, uh, I think it's important for us to have a background of our locality. So uh, barley, where we are doing this project, is a municipality in Mountain Province. Uh, I'm not sure if uh, some of us are familiar with barley. Uh, maybe we know it as the hometown of uh, Carrotman, aka Jerick Sigmaton, or it's also the place where you can find Mount Amuyao, one of the highest peaks in the Philippines. But um, uh, little do most people know that it's also dubbed as the last ecological frontier of Mountain Province. Why? Because that's where you can find some of the last remaining dipterocarp and mossy forests, which as we know, more than 90% of these have been wiped out of the Philippines ever since the colonial period began. So thankfully, uh, we still have uh, in Barley, thanks to conservation efforts rooting from our indigenous practice. So um, estimatedly up to this time, uh, 85 to 90 percent of the total land area of barley consists of rainforest from the Tor Carp to lower mountain and upper mountain forest up to a point, uh, 2,700 meter, meters above civil, sea level that we still have uh, bonsai forests as they call it. So barley is also home to critically endangered species, including the Philippine eagle. And the forests of barley are important uh, sources uh, or feed uh, numerous river systems, particularly Tanuda River and Magat River, which are not only irrigating rice paddies or farms in barley, but all the way to the lowlands of uh, uh, Isabela and Cagayan. So coming from just a very remote municipality, you could already see the impact that it has thanks to the conserved or the pristine forest condition in Barlig. So I'll be showing you some pictures of what really Barlig, Barlig's rainforest looks like. Yeah, so um, at the right, uh, this is just a snapshot of uh, a portion of Barlig's uh, forest. Uh, it's a shot from an elevation of more than 1,800 meters above sea level. And from here, you could see uh, the vastness of it, the vastness of the rainforest. Uh, our elders used to say that when you are at this point, you could hear you could hear the 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 call of the Philippine eagle, the hawks, and other uh, species, uh, some of which are rarely heard nowadays. So there you also find Lias Village. Uh, this is where we are particularly piloting this uh, project uh, because this is where I'm from. So uh, Barlik, by the way, is composed of three clusters. We have Lias, we have Centro, and we have Kadaklan. And it is here in Lias where we are uh, currently implementing our rainforest coffee project, which we hope to be able to replicate in other areas, not just in Barlik, but beyond. 
So if you go if you go inside uh, the rainforest of Barley, this is what you'll find. You'll find towering um, towering hardwood trees like white lawaan, red lawaan, um, nara, apitong, etc. You also see the biggest flowers in the world called graflesia, and you you uh, as they say there. There are multiple species of uh, Rafflesia in Lias, but uh, this remains uh, to be documented and uh, mainstream for public awareness. Um, at the right, rightmost part of the slide, you'll see um, kind of look, looking like a grapes, but hindi to grapes. These are this is one of the species of figs that are found in our on our forests. And so we also have the giant almasiga. They say that this is the tallest tree species in the Philippines, reaching up to 60 meters high. Uh, but what really interests me most with almasiga is uh, uh, how important it is as a habitat for the Philippine eagle. Uh, sabi ng mga elders namin, this is for our uh, lawi or the Philippine eagle's uh, nest or breed. And that's how important it is. Plus, of course, uh, its role in maintaining soil stability to prevent landslides and soil erosion, as well as its function uh, in providing ecological services, not just for humans, but for the wildlife species. Yeah. So uh, at the right side of the slide, you find Saya Mossy Forest. This is really one of the underrated but critically important ecosystems in Lias or in Barlig. Uh, it's it's a valley. It's uh, up to 2,000 meters above sea level and it's home to what we locally call bonsai forest because here you'll find stunted, stunted trees uh, that are of uh, diverse uh, species, and when you are on a particular ridge, uh, hunters say that they can of they can often see uh, mga baboy ramo, mga deers that are just running around uh, on the forest for this how visible they are because of the stunted vegetation, and that's how rich uh, this forest is. Unfortunately, just like in other areas across the Philippines, and of course in uh, Mountain Province, we are also seeing the degradation of our rainforest and its biodiversity, primarily, of course, with the introduction of different developmental projects uh, that lacks consideration for environmental sustainability. Uh, we also have uh, um, uncontrolled hunting, poaching, illegal logging, uh, etc. All of these uh, are contributing to uh, the deterioration of our forests. And of course, add to this as well, commercial agriculture, monocropping in particular, uh, that requires the total clearing of forests to be able to plant crops. So for example, since uh, high school, I, I've really seen this trend of how, how our forests are being wiped out to give way to citrus plantation, uh, which is of course understandable because uh, people need income and citrus is the most viable income that they can see. And that has been introduced at that time. But sadly with citrus, with citrus production, uh, that requires total forest clearing and uh, excessive use of chemical inputs in order to thrive. Although I believe that it can be done in a more sustainable fashion. Yeah, so um, I really had this idea when I was uh, working in uh, Manila that uh, what if I'll be able, that I was in the office work, uh, I realized that uh, it's not really something for me to 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 be uh, working in an office for the longest time. I really wanted to do something to give back to our community. So I've thought of what can I do uh, in our community, a project perhaps that aligns with our advocacy of rainforest conservation, at the same time promoting our cultural integrity as indigenous people. And so uh, I've thought of starting a coffee farm. Uh, coffee is something not new naman sa akin kasi we grew up uh, sa community namin now that has a lot of coffee trees, Arabica. Century old typica Arabica that was introduced by the Spaniards. So that time kasi hindi namin nakikita yung value ng coffee. We just use it as a toy. Uh, pinipitas namin, tapos tinatapon namin sa isa't isa. Uh, that was our childhood play using coffee. Uh, but then lately, of course, with our exposure sa Manila, especially with specialty coffee, um, our connection, our introduction to to different coffee shops and uh, cafes dito. That's how that's where I got to see really the value of coffee, especially now. There's a growing demand, uh, not just for coffee, but specialty, naturally grown, organic, and sustainable coffee. And so uh, that's what sort of an awakening for me that uh, hmm, um, bar, uh, coffee has been growing in our community. I guess it's something that I can we can revitalize with my fellow advocates uh, in Bar Leagues. That's why. Barley grain forest coffee uh, came into the forefront. And note that rainforest is at the heart of it because we know that 
protecting or preserving the rainforest is really critical uh, to ensuring the sustainability of our coffee farm. At the same time, giving extra benefits as to sustaining the ecological services na napapakinabang ng aming community all the way to the lowlands of Region 2. So, so Barley Grain Forest Coffee aims to reverse deforestation and biodiversity decline through ecological-based coffee farming. Um, of course, there are technical terms or there are jargons here that are, that are quite uh, scientific, we should say, but I so believe that uh, these are nothing new. Um, these are these are concept, these are concepts that's not new because uh, as indigenous people, we've been practicing this sustainability as at the heart of our practice and identity as indigenous people. It's only now lately that we are now having these terms as agroforestry, afforestation, sustainability, ecological based farming. But this has been done in the past, especially among indigenous people, not just in Bar League, but elsewhere. And so we are basically uh, putting that advocacy of environmental and cultural in this project. Yeah, so um, a little bit of background. Um, so Barley Grain Forest Coffee is a pilot project that aims to promote coffee production vis-a-vis -vis rainforest preservation and cultural integrity promotion. Really, um, our motivation for doing this is because as indigenous people, we believe that land is life. And when we say land, we are not only referring to the soil, but also to the plants, the fauna, uh, the forest as a whole, of course, the, the the microorganisms that's there, everything that's there, whether matter or energy, uh, including the rivers um, that, that comes from the, the forest. We consider that as land and land is integral to our survival uh, as indigenous people. And I so believe in this because for the longest time, uh, our community, Lias in particular, or Barlig, have been self-sustaining, have been self-sufficient. We didn't have to have external um, external source to have food on the table or to be able to meet our needs. Everything is there. And that is possible it's because we are taking care of the rivers of the forest. Kaya mga, may mga wildlife kami na hukuli, may, kaya may meat kami. We have, uh, we have countless species of plants in the forest where we get our medicine. And of course, the different species of uh, the different aquatic species on our rivers that we are taking care of because this is where we get giant eels, uh, fishes, etc. All of this contributing to a varied and healthy diet. And of course, uh, thanks to our forest, uh, we're able to grow food on our rice terraces uh, using organic principles. We don't have to use synthetic inputs to be able to have a productive and sustainable farm. Okay, so basically that's uh, this is the benchmark where we are laying the foundation of barley grain forest coffee. So the farm, our pilot farm is located in Sitio Cabawa, Barangay Diaz Canluran, Barlig Mountain Province. It has an elevation of 1,300 meters above sea level to 1,500 meters above sea level. This is high and it's ideal for Arabica coffee, which we are planting sa, sa aming pilot farm. So just to give a background, we have four species of coffee. We have Arabica, uh, we have Robusta, which is the most common, which is used by Nestle and other multinational corporations. We have Liberica, this is the authentic Baraco, and we have Excelsa. At the farm, uh, we have uh, we have uh, at least 10 varieties of Arabica, especially the Tipica, the Bourbon, the Catimor, the Pacamara, uh, the Mundo Novo, etc. So um, the variety is because we want to see really what variety is fit for our place and what can what can produce more cherries, what is more resilient to pests and diseases, and what is more fitting as a coffee under the rainforest. So it's still a work in progress. We don't claim it's a perfect model. Uh, we are still having some mishaps, but at the same time, we are learning from these experiences. Yeah, so um, why rainforest coffee? Uh, where did we get this idea? Um, coffee by default grows from the native forest of Ethiopia. And when I learned it, gosh, I guess this is this is really something that uh, we can implement in Barley because Barley is almost entirely forest. So what crop could we possibly introduce? And that's coffee. Uh, thankfully, uh, it's not just in Ethiopia. We are also seeing increasing models of rainforest coffee across Costa Rica, Panama, Colombia. This only means to show that in varied locations or in different uh, geographical terrains, rainforest coffee is possible. You can restore denuded mountains and come up with a forest ecosystem with coffee as your pilot crop alongside native trees. Yeah, so... Our goals and objectives is number one, to preserve the rainforest and its biodiversity to ensure sustained ecological services. 
Um, of course, um, so what we are all familiar now with the importance of forests that it prevents landslide, it prevents floods, uh, it prevents other environmental disasters that's happening around that. We know that uh, because our mountains in Sierra Madre or in, let's say, in Marikina, in the uplands of Marikina are denuded. That's why we are having a massive flooding here in Manila from time to time. Or because we've lugged the mountains of Sierra Madre or Samar or in or on the Bukidon Highlands that we are having water scarcity. I mean, it's kind of obvious now thanks to social media and we are learned people. So we are seeing this uh, happening really <laughs> So that's really our goal because, um, as I've shared earlier, our rainforest uh, is critical to ensuring the ecological services that our coffee needs in order to grow and thrive from, from nutrient cycling, uh, from, from the moisture, from protection from, from strong typhoons, from winds, from too much rains and sun, uh, etc. So uh, basically what we are doing is to, to integrate coffee into the rainforest setting so that it becomes a part of the rainforest. And so it becomes of that balance, it becomes a part of that balanced ecosystem where each species is interacting in order for each species to, to grow and thrive. And that's what we are doing with coffee. So uh, for this objective, I believe that we are uh, targeting uh, at least three, at least three sustainable development goals. We have um, we have good health and well-being. Um, I think it's a common fact that forests are are have that healing effect on on humans um when when you walk in that forest into a forest you really have the sense of peace and fulfillment and relaxation i, I don't know i guess uh because uh it's kind of the pasture where god wants us to travel so we feel that unique uh peace of course we also have climate action i, I believe that directly protecting rainforests or res or reforestation uh, is directly in is directly contributing to climate change uh, mitigation and adaptation because basically uh, <clears throat> the diversity of uh, our, because basically rainforests are one of the most important uh, um, um, ecosystems that sequester carbon from uh, the atmosphere and so by planting by protecting their established rainforests and planting more rainforests we are allowing our areas or our localities to absorb more carbon and eventually uh, help mitigate or adapt to climate change and its devastating impacts. And of course, life on land. Um, in, our rainfor in our rainforest farm, you will find a variety of wildlife species. Like for example, that one that I'm holding, that's one of the multiple snake species there at the farm. And when, whenever we see one, we let it stay there because we know that this, uh, this snake, for example, feeds on rat that feeds on, on some of our crops aside from coffee. And you know, that, that kind of is already there thanks to this uh, uh, wildlife species. So of course, add to that the the fauna uh, that we know are that we are convinced are critical to maintaining a healthy farm, right? Okay, so, uh, preserve our indigenous knowledge systems relevant to agriculture and forest sustainability. Of course, uh, it's a given that our ancestors have been farmers uh, tilling the mountains, uh, uh, planting rice on uh, terraces uh, for for centuries and so uh, somewhat they've evolved or developed practices relevant to agriculture. And take note that by default, all of these are organic, uh, natural, and don't require external inputs in order to thrive. They just use what's able to, uh, whatever that's available locally in order to make their farms productive. Like for example, um, we have some locally term species that we use uh, like uh, locally term species that we use in order to fertilize our uh, rice terraces. Uh, we have this wild sunflower, sorry, I, for, I forgot the term. Uh, we also have this koleplep, that's uh, nitrogen fixing. Uh, this, all of these are locally available, right? Um, so uh, really, I, I believe that uh, IKS are not obsolete, although so many people say that uh, move on with IKS, uh, ha have these modern innovations. No, no, no. If our IKS were able to sustain our ancestors for generations to come, despite the changing dynamics, despite the changing, uh, um, you know, a, a lot of changes, and until now they are still self-sustaining, that means that IKS are effective in ensuring uh, food security, uh, food productivity or agricultural productivity. And that's, that's where we are taking inspiration and incorporating some of our IKS on agriculture into our 
um, farming practices at the barley grain forest coffee farm. So I believe that for this uh, second goal or objective, we are hitting uh, number one, no poverty, zero hunger, and sustainable cities and communities. Um, while some media may portray uh, remote communities or indigenous communities are somewhat poor, not necessarily, uh, especially in, in, in the north, uh, you really find a lot of self-sustaining community thanks to preserve uh, rainforests and other natural ecosystems. That's why there's no poverty, uh, there's zero hunger, uh, because they, they're basically producing food that are healthy, heirloom, organic, and that's uh, adaptable to the local condition. So we could say that these are models of sustainable communities that we can replicate and we can learn from. Yeah. Right. So, uh, provide sustainable livelihood for the, uh, for the community. Um, of course, this is uh still a work in progress. Uh, as of now, we are still working with the uh, with the youths in our community. Um, to be able to establish this farm and to continue scaling it up. So at the same time that we involve them um, as helpers of the farm, we are also capacitating them on why we are doing this. Why are we? Why are we not clearing the forest? Why are we preserving the forest? Why are we maintaining the biodiversity or the wildlife? We are capacitating them on that part so that they themselves would see how beneficial it is to to protect the rainforest, um, not just in coffee, but in food in general, that they may also be inspired to replicate this model in their own uh, farm. So for this part, I believe that uh, we are targeting also zero hunger, uh, decent work and economic growth, uh, peace, justice, and strong institutions. In fact, um, uh, for this part, I, I'm not just involving youths from our locality, but also youths from other tribes, because I, uh, we wanted to see really the harmony uh, to bring reconciliation, because in the past, there, there have been a lot of tribal wars, but now through coffee, we are trying to establish peace, starting with our youths, whom we are engaging with. Yeah, so, uh, of course, we also... Yeah, as I said, we also want to empower the youths to become champions of forest preservation and cultural uh, integrity, which is, I believe um, uh, directly addressing climate action. Um, climate change you know, is a global problem, but I believe that uh, we can have more impacts when we do uh, grassroots solutions, when we do local-based solutions involving the, the participation of the grassroots people, uh, maybe be farmers, fishermen, or whatever sector that they are in. Of course, the 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 youth. And so uh, really what I appreciate from this project is because uh, uh, by engaging the youths on coffee, although they're initially seeing the economic or the practical side of it, eventually nakikita din nila how this coffee project is interconnecting to forest conservation and how forest conservation is interconnecting to addressing climate change and how how addressing climate change directly impacts uh, their livelihood and or their future and so uh, it's really uh, it's really a powerful one for me uh, seeing seeing this kind of uh, uh, engagement or seeing this kind of uh, changing mindset or behavior among our youth uh, thanks to our coffee project right. <clears throat> Um, so how do we do this? How do we do the rainforest coffee project? Well, uh, it's a combination of different uh, uh, it's a combination of different farming practices. We're implementing permaculture, agroforestry, afforestation, uh, and other even salt as as slope agricultural land technology. So uh, it's a diverse system that we are implementing, but basically, the goal really is to harmonize whatever practice or whatever agricultural system that we have with the setting of the rainforest. Uh, it, we, most of the farm, by the way, is two thirds of it is rainforest. So what we are really doing is to first plant on areas that have been previously cleared. And that's where we are impl implementing this agroforestry stuff. But on existing forests, we try to, we just do some minimal modification. For example, we trim. Uh, uh, we we trim some parts of the forest where we plant the coffee and remove some some trees, some small trees to give way to light penetration that to for it to be able to reach our, our coffee plant, right? So, uh, for this part, we use established forest as shade to coffee and we incorporate native trees as pioneer crops with coffee on previously cleared areas. So, uh, we are not doing away with the forest again. Uh, we are working with the forest to be able to plant coffee. Right, and eventually on areas that have been denuded, we first plant coffee and then we integrate native species until eventually it becomes a forest 
uh, alongside with the is existing or established forest, right? So we incorporate different shade, cover crop, and coffee species or varieties on a plot to align with agroforestry and afforestation principles. Uh, as I mentioned, some parts of the farm have been, some forests of the farm have been removed in the past uh, to plant citrus. We used to, um, we started with citrus as our crop at the farm, uh, but then I really saw the devastation or the impact it has not only on the soil, but also on our family health. And so I, I realized that, oh, I, we should not continue with this. We we should uh, take a breather um, and in, have coffee instead as our crop uh, at, at present. And that's what we are doing now. Although we are uh, not totally doing away with citrus, rather we are incorporating coffee and other uh, species on, on this particular plot. So eventually we hope that uh, uh, by doing this, we'll be able to create more uh, rainforest starting with coffee. So if you can see the picture, um, in this uh, obvious, pero you can see some coffee, uh, you can see some citrus, some native trees, uh, the slowly evolving to become a forest. And we know, uh, and we know na major selective din kami when it comes to doing this. Say we we choose the species that have beneficial uh, effect for for every species, and especially the coffee that we have. And we don't. Uh, in fact, we also remove some some species that were accidentally planted uh, because we don't know the impact. Like for example, mahogany. We know the allelopathy effect that it has. And so unfortunately we had to remove uh, mahogany to give way to native species instead, right? <laughs> right, so um, if you can see the picture, that's uh, that's our farm. Um, can you see the arrow from my screen? Hello. Yes, po. Yes, nakikita po namin. Yeah. So, uh, um, this is the farm. It's very sloping. Um, you really, literally, have to climb. Um, how do you call that? To climb your way up to be able to reach some sides of the uh, the farm from one thousand three hundred meters to one thousand five hundred meters above sea level. So it's more than sixty percent uh, uh, rainforest, and most of it we don't intend to modify or even plant coffee with. Uh, we we retain it as such because we know uh, how critical it is to ensuring the overall stability of our farm, especially when typhoons uh, typhoons strike. So we just identified some areas here, uh, especially those that have been uh, previously planted with citrus as our a plot for planting coffee, right? Okay, so we only apply organic or natural base inputs at the farm. Uh, we also develop fertilizers using materials and microorganisms that are indigenous to, to the area. Uh, in fact, one technology that we are working with now is uh, JADAM, uh, which is um, Korean-based uh, technology. It's still on the experimental phase, but uh, we did have uh, applied this uh, technology multiple times and really saw how it contributed to 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 the growth of uh, our experimental coffee plant. Um, for Jadam, um, for Jadam, we only use uh, plants that are native to the area, and we get only microorganisms from the tallest trees, from the oldest trees at the farm, because these are the most uh, effective when it comes to um, really optimizing the benefits that uh, Jadam organic solutions can really give. Um, in, in some areas of the farm, we don't have to apply uh, inputs. Why? Because the soil is that fertile. In fact, if you uh, if you dig on some parts of the plant, the, the, the top soil is more than a meter high. That's how fertile it is thanks to the forest. So yeah, uh, essentially we let the rainforest do its job. The birds feed on farm on harmful pests and insects. The tall trees protect the coffee from too much rains and sunlight. The surrounding forests promote healthy soil and encourage indigenous microorganisms. Certain plants from the forest are also resources of nutrients for the coffee. Um, although we've uh, we've specified some of uh, pra the practices that we do, really more are uh, essentially it all goes back to really um, systemizing our practices according to the ways of the rainforest. Yes, we may be doing uh, a lot of activities to fertilize the soil to to and to 
to hasten or perhaps to improve the productivity of our coffee plants. But eventually, we want that uh, as we grow forests uh, with our coffee, we don't have to do all these practices already. Eventually, it's the forest that's taking care of the coffee. At the same time, we, the farmers, take care of the forest to take care of our coffee. So we basically want to create this coffee forest ecosystem that doesn't have to require a lot of human intervention in order to thrive. Because we've we've seen this in other, we've seen this in models elsewhere and it's possible. So if it's possible there, I believe that it's all the more possible uh, in Barley Mountain Province and elsewhere. Right, so we started in 2021, although there are already existing coffee trees in our land that our father planted way back in the 2010. And in fact, these are the plants that gave us the most harvest since 2021 as well. So from 2021, we planted more than 2,700 Arabica coffee with at least, no, it's not five, but 10 varieties, such as Tipica, Bourbon, Katimor, Katura, and Pacamara. And um, this year, we'll be planting our experimental geisha, which is like the most expensive coffee in the world, but we'll try to see how it works at the farm. So again, uh, we are planting a variety of coffee because we just want to see uh, which variety really is fit for this slot, which variety is uh, ideal for rainforest ecosystem, uh, etc. And definitely, will be uh, as we go on with this, we'll be prioritizing uh, uh, certain varieties only to plant at the farm. Right. So we harvested at least 100 kilos of coffee cherries, including coffee trees planted by our father. So again, mainly our harvest uh, when we started is uh, because of the uh, existing coffee trees that we have. And these are Tipica Arabica, which are like the rare, which are like one of the most rarest varieties in the Philippines, although they were the first to be introduced. Um, and these are considered heirloom in, in, in our locality or in the north in general. So uh, for us, this is really a relief. Uh, this is really a joy for us as farmers because um, for, for for that period of time, we're already seeing results of, of what we're doing. And in fact, um, from from on 2022, we also had our first harvest of coffee from our Katimor Arabica. And when we went back, uh, we had our boot camp there last weekend and we really saw um, more coffee trees that are that have uh, bloomed and we're confident that this will be able to yield us more cherries for this year and next year. I hope makatikim din kayo sa coffee namin. So uh, just message us on our Facebook page and we'll get in touch. Or if you want, you can also visit yung farm namin to, to try picking the coffee for yourself. Yeah, so uh, of course, uh, since we started, we have involved more than 20 youths and capacitated them on environmental stewardship through sustainable coffee production. So really, this is uh, what's more heartening for me uh, because uh, we are seeing not just uh, the coffee, the coffee cherry, but also the awakening of some of our fellow youths when it comes to environmental stewardship, and especially that they are indigenous and that uh, there's the need to revitalize their identity, their their value system as stewards of the land, of the forest. So we also showcase our coffee on different local to international events, such as Manila Coffee Festival, um, the Specialty Coffee Association of Japan 2023, the Philippine Coffee Festival and the Indigenous Slow Food Exhibit uh, uh, Taiwan with uh, with our team of uh, youth coffee lovers and and advocates. And in fact, there have been a lot of inquiries of where can we get your coffee? Uh, can, can you supply us this, that, and that? But the problem is we don't have supply because we are just starting. And that's, that's really, I see it as a promising thing to do, especially for the youth, because so many people demand good, organic, naturally grown coffee, but we just don't have the supply. And thanks to these kinds of activities, we're able to reach more people who are also passionate in drinking coffee or sharing the coffee experience uh, with other people. Yeah. And so, yeah, we had this, uh, our coffee was showcased in Japan. Uh, we had this exhibit in Taiwan, and we're really seeing this connect uh, with other sectors like like the hospitality sector for example in taiwan who wanted to collaborate with us to showcase uh, sustainable coffee but then again we don't have enough coffee <laughs> to be able to showcase with them yeah, and so we also conducted the first of a series of barley grain forest coffee boot camps in partnership with vera coffee and farm to cup benguet this was uh, 
uh, during the last weekend. And we just had five participants, but we have uh, uh, at least eight volunteers. Uh, all of them are youths who really came just because they want to experience what Rainforest Coffee looks like, how are we doing it, and uh, how can this really contribute to um, to sustainability in general. And um, this will, again, this will be uh, the first of more boot camps to come uh, to, for us to capacitate our fellow youths and other coffee enthusiasts about the importance of Rainforest Coffee. Right, so we, we have also been featured on various uh, uh, digital and print platforms, uh, like for example, Farm Table. Uh, but for me, what's important here is that uh, our advocacy on preserving the rainforest to produce quality coffee is being amplified, uh, especially to the consumers of Metro Manila and other uh, urban areas in the Philippines. And hopefully, uh, we could elicit more support uh, on organic, naturally grown coffee. I, I, it's our hope that through these uh, platforms, uh, more people will drink not just coffee, but coffee that has conscience, that has social and environmental conscience. Right. So uh, we've also noticed the improving biodiversity at the farm and its surrounding rainforest. For example, we are seeing honey. Uh, we have we have we have stingless honey. We have this I I don't really know the scientific name of this honey, but it's a common honey in our locality. So this one, uh, when we saw this, there's that there's that uh, what do you call it? there's that immediate reaction na uy puti natin yan ang daming honey kasi ukang busog yan ang laki. But then I've thought na ay wag muna wag muna because we know that uh, uh, coffee coffee flowers are about to come and we need this beast. To pollinate the flowers and of our coffee, so hindi namin to kinuha. We just let them stay there and yeah, just be bees at the farm. And now we've seen the 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 wholesome blooming of our coffee trees, and we're we're thinking ah maybe because these bees were there to help in the pollination. Right. So, uh, so much has been said. What, what do we do now moving forward? Of course, uh, basically it's to continue planting coffee. Uh, encourage more community members to plant coffee following sustainability principles. Uh, once we've seen really the impact of what we are doing at our pilot farm, we hope to be able to share this with other farmers, not just in our area, but also in other provinces. Like, for example, uh, we are working with my brother Neo in Kabayan Benguet at the uh, at the foot of Mount Pulag to be able to also restore what used to be conventional vegetable farm into an agroforestry coffee using uh, species that are there. Right. So we also, yeah, we want to replicate the model farm on other areas in the Cordillera region, collaborate with local government officials to develop other programs or projects to strengthen rainforest protection and preservation. And for this part, we are particularly eyeing agritourism, ecotourism to, to give uh, added livelihood or financial support to our committee members who are engaged on this project. So we also want to organize more interactive activities such as boot camps at the farm to raise awareness on the importance of forest preservation and sustainable agriculture. agriculture. And of course, um, we, with our love, with our heart, you are most welcome to also participate in these activities. If you want, you can contact me. Uh, if you want to take a break from the city hustle to come to the farm, just experience nature and plant coffee uh, with us. Yeah, so again, uh, thank you so much, everyone, for listening. Uh, for listening, uh, uh, it's really an honor sharing our experiences, our farm, uh, with you. And I hope that you'll be one in us in championing our organic, naturally grown rainforest, uh, rainforest uh, coffee. Because this is not just about barley, but really this is about the entire country and beyond uh, benefiting from the restoration of our forests. So, Ako, maraming uh, salamat, Daniel. Uh, Mr. Manchin, ang dami namin natutunan. Sayang ko lang ang oras, pero bumalik ka ha. Meron kasi uh, pwede bang ilagay mo na lang doon sa group chat, sa chat box, yung iyong sure. contact numbers kasi may nagtatanong paano doon makaka-order ng iyong barley coffee. No? So, pakilagay mo na lang sa chat box and we hope to hear from you again soon. So, maraming salamat. Ano? Bigyan naman natin ng isang uh, uh, masigabong online palakpak ang ating guest na si Mr. Daniel Jason Matches. Sir, di ka din, Daniel. Alam mo, dami mo pang gustong sabihin, pero kulang ang oras. Please come back kung meron kang mga achievements or accomplishments na gusto mong i-share sa amin. So, in behalf of the Future Earth Philippines, the National Academy of Science and Technology, 
ang National Research Council of the Philippines, and of course, the UNICEA na Ateneo de Malay University. We would like to thank everybody again for listening, watching ang ating uh, SDG Action Hour 69th episode. So, see you on Fridays ating 70th episode. Naku, wow, na, 70th. Anniversary na oh. natin, di ba? Thank you so much. Naku, thank you po and uh, for the time that you have given us. Thank you sa ating mga tagapakinig sa Facebook Live at mapapanood nyo ang inyong mga sarili sa YouTube, Dr. Bagtasa and also uh, Daniel Jason Maches. Makikita nyo ang inyong sarili at mapapanood nyo sa YouTube. See you again on Friday. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Maraming salamat. Thank you.